you want the players to look at their quarterback as a captain. And if they don't, then you have a problem. You're listening to the Jacob Media Sports Network in partnership with AM 1490 Sports Betting Radio. Subscribe to the Jacob Media channel on YouTube for access to all daily sports content. All right, welcome back. We're live in the Prop Swap Studios, AM 1490 Sports Betting Radio, and it's time. Let's bring in John McMullen to the conversation. Follow John on Twitter at JFMcMullen, phillyvoice.com, si.com, host of Extending the Play, every Saturday morning, 10 a.m. to 11. Johnny Mac, how are we doing, sir? Doing well on this uh, Nick Sirianni Eve. Uh, finally going to get introduced tomorrow. That's going to be exciting for Eagles fans. Oh, yeah. We're going to be, uh, you know, overanalyzing, criticizing, praising, you know, every word uh, that that man says. So noon tomorrow, right? Uh, yeah, noon tomorrow. Uh, gets to meet the media for the first time. I uh, did speak to Eagles.com today, but that's not the media, so... <laughs> might get uh, a little bit more difficult questions uh, tomorrow. But, yeah, it's it's one of those things, sort of uh, a rite of passage. And people tend to um, put too much emphasis on those things for veteran coaches. We saw that with Doug Peterson uh, for years and years and years. Uh, but, it, it, you know, it, it is a little bit daunting. He's never done it before. So I imagine he's got uh, a few butterflies yeah, I'm sure. Um, so what's uh, what's the question that you're hoping to ask Coach Sirianni tomorrow? Uh, well, I, I know he's going to call plays, uh, but uh, I want to ask him if he is calling plays, and he's going to say yes, and then you're going to say, you know why? You've never done it before. Do you have any thoughts about being a CEO coach, especially with such young coordinators? Um, Scott Steichen is uh, – 35, I believe. Jonathan Gannon is 37. Uh, and Michael Clay was offered the special teams coordinator job today. He's 29. Uh, so, you know, it, it's a bunch of guys who haven't done it before. Um, and, and maybe you would want to sort of take more of a uh, consultary role. Uh, so I think it'll be interesting to see why he wants to do it the way he wants to do it. Um, but, you know, you, you have to get some of these things on the record, so to speak. Absolutely. Uh, we're talking with John McMullen, our Eagles insider. We're only going to hear from Sirianni tomorrow. Anyone else, whether that's Lori, Howie, or any of the other new hires? Uh, as of right now, it's just Sirianni. I, I think because he's the head coach, they'll probably uh, leave him uh, a, yeah. as a standalone. You might have Jeffrey and Howie introduce him, uh, but they'll. My guess is because of Zoom, everything is still virtual. My um, guess is they'll try to uh, bail out <laughs> there as quickly as possible. Uh, you know, it's not like we're there live, so it'll be pretty easy. But that's just speculation. That's just a guess. Uh, I think they'll want to leave it for him alone because obviously there'd be a lot of questions for Jeffrey, especially uh, through the process. So I think they'll get uh, out of the way pretty quickly. And then you'll get to the coordinators. Uh, Shane, did I call him Scott? Yeah, they're so new. Shane Steichen and, and Jonathan Gannon um, next week, most likely. But they'll, they'll talk relatively soon, I would imagine. Um, John, what did I want to ask you? I literally just, um, uh, it, it, uh, went away from me here real quick, but, um, I'm completely, everything's so new. I don't blame you. I gotta, I, I gotta catch myself. Everything is just, um, it, it, it's, you know, I, I keep going back to, and, and Clay would be the latest and he has not accepted the job indications that he, he was here. He was actually an Oregon linebacker who Chip Kelly brought here. 
uh, in his first coaching job and, and then went out to San Francisco with Chip and kind of hung on out there. Um, you know, Chip had the one bad season, but they kept him on as an assistant special teams coach. And uh, they want to make him the special teams coordinator. And that's interesting because, I mean, you go from uh, Dave Fipp, a veteran guy like that, to 29-year-old um, coach who's, who's never been a special teams coordinator. Same thing on defense, Jim Swartz, 25 years versus Jonathan Gannon, who was, you know, a quality control coach when Jim was already in probably year 15, year 16, year 17, somewhere in that range. Yeah, so so much um, new faces and that young faces. Carson was the captain, right? Like Carson Wentz wore the C on his jersey this year, correct? This past year? Yeah, I mean, just about every quarterback does. I wouldn't yeah. put too much into that, or good or bad. Uh, right. It's just, you know, that's a natural thing. Um, if you're the quarterback, you're going to be a captain. If you're the starting quarterback, um, I, you know, there's certain, uh, I know it's a big deal in hockey. Uh, there's certain guys, Malcolm Jenkins, when he was here, um, I, I think you would put a little bit more behind it. Um, I know Doug, for instance, just named captains last year. He didn't even have the players vote on it. Um, so I and maybe that's why, by the way. <laughs> you know, I'm just thinking out loud. You well, that's why I asked. Like, how will yeah. the coach, you know, potentially assign leaders, or if he's going to let the players do it? Just the whole dynamic. Yeah, I, I mean, who knows? I, I I don't think that's going to be you know on the top fifty yeah. uh, of Nick Sirianni's <laughs> list. I just don't think it's that important. But I, I do think. You know, it's probably more important if you look at it that way. Like, you want um, you want the players to look at their quarterback as a captain. And if they don't, then you have a problem. So, you know, that would be more of a concern to me, not the actual C. Like, if right. you thought – and I don't know if Doug thought this. I just know that he named the captains. Um if you think that they're not going to to vote for the quarterback, that's 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 probably a problem. And by the way, I I don't think they would have any concern uh, if Jalen Hurts was the starting quarterback. So if, from that standpoint, I guess it's a, a a little bit to keep an eye on. But I, I imagine you know Nick won't get to that till August. Right. Yeah. That's. Uh... Not anywhere near the top of his list and a long ways away from, from uh, even getting to that point. So I asked you last night, John, about the offense and what we could potentially see different, the same uh, changes. Let's go to the other side. I'm just curious about the type of changes, and we've touched on this in the past, but just to revisit it, what's going to change now uh, with Jim Schwartz out, um, and what can we expect to see new or different? Well, if you look at where Gannon comes from, he was with uh, obviously in Indianapolis with with Matt Everflus. Before that, he was with Mike Zimmer in uh, Minnesota. So um, he's going to run the four three, and that makes sense. I mean, that's what the Eagles are built for. That's their strength, the defensive line. So you're not going to change that aspect of it. Um, probably do a little bit less wide nine. Uh, than Jim did, and probably a little bit more uh, cover two, uh, two high safeties instead of single high. Uh, that's what I've heard about him. Uh, probably a little bit more blitzing, which fans will like uh, until it doesn't work. Um, but y- y- you need, uh, I mean, I always say, I mean, the Eagles haven't valued, we've talked about it a lot, they haven't valued the linebacker position. I mean, if you want them to blitz, well, they got to get some linebackers. They got to get somebody who can blitz. It might be a slot cornerback. Like, if you think about Tyron Massow and how um, exciting he could be doing that. You saw it with Tampa Bay with Whitehead coming off the edge. Um, Winfield, before he got hurt, would do some of the same things. Uh, so, you know, you can do it in different ways, but the Eagles really don't have those types of players yet. So 
what we always talk about is personnel. If you want to do a certain thing, it's great, but you got to have the players to do it. And, you know, good defensive coordinators, and I'll go back to, uh, again, Gannon's um, mentor and, and, and Jimmer, like uh, they lost uh, Danelle Hunter this year. They lost Anthony Barr. They lost Eric Kendricks, and he's, of course, famous for those um, double-A gap blitzes and those overload blitzes uh, on third downs that were so successful. I think they had a top-five defense three or four years in a row um, until it kind of fell apart this year um, because he didn't have the personnel and he had to play, you know, more zone to cover up for things. Um, So it it depends on the players you have. And right now the Eagles have a good front four and probably a bad back seven. So until they, they bolster that back seven, I don't know how much he can do as far as blitzing and as far as yeah. um, coverage and, and different schemes. So I think you're going to see a lot of cover too and, uh, until they start getting better players. Who's going to return and who's not going to be here as far as the defense as much as you can you know predict? Well, the Eagles, you know, it's good because obviously we, we know the salary cap issues. Um uh, they don't have uh, a ton of money to do anything in free agency. Um, they don't. The good news is they're unrestricted free agents. They don't have a lot of, of, of really difficult decisions. Probably the best one, and I just did this story on SI.com. I, I, I ranked their, their free agents as far as who they might want back, and Jalen Mills is number one, and that's a guy they might not even want back. So, in other words, you know, they're going to move on from a a lot of veteran players, but veteran players that are under contract. So, Deshaun Jackson, Alshon Jeffrey, uh, Malik Jackson on the defensive side of the ball. Those are guys that are just too expensive. They're not going to be back. Uh, But they're under contract. They're not free agents. Uh, Zach Ertz as well. Carson Wentz is in that category. So, those are – uh, the difficult decisions as far as the unrestricted guys who are actually pending free agents, not a lot of tough decisions. And you're talking about guys like Mills and, you know, Rudy Ford, who's a great special teams player. You probably want to keep, um, you know, Richard Rogers. If you get rid of Zach Ertz, you might have, uh, you might think he's more valuable as a potential uh, second tight end behind Dallas Goddard. Um, and, and, you know, players like that, the slot corners, Cravon LeBlanc, Mikhail Roby Coleman, these are not, you know, guys who are going to make or break you. Let's put it that way. You mentioned Zach Ertz, and we're going to bounce around a little bit tonight, but I saw something that, uh, you know, the Buffalo Bills could be a team potentially interested in trading for Zach Ertz. Um, you know, when could we see that happen? Just the timeline of any potential trade. I know it's not anytime soon. And what realistically could the Eagles get in return for Zach? Uh, people are going to be disappointed. I don't think they could get a lot uh, in return for Zach Ertz for a number of reasons. Um, one, he's coming off a, a really bad year. Um, so there's a concern. You know, He's going to hit 30, and there's a concern that you're a descending player at that point. Two, he makes a lot of money. Uh, so if you're going to pick up that contract in a trade, you got to factor that into it. The salary cap is going down for the first time ever, about $40 million most likely uh, due to the pandemic. Uh, and then most other teams know uh, that the Eagles are going to move on. Uh, and at the end of the day, they might have to release them to move on. So, uh, you know, other teams aren't dumb. You never say never. There's always the potential to be dumb. But if somebody does want to trade for him, somebody like Buffalo, uh, probably the only reason they would want to trade for him is they didn't. They don't want him to hit the open market and then have competition, even though it would be cheaper. He might choose to go somewhere else. Uh, so you might offer a late-round pick with maybe some conditions, if he plays 16 games, if he makes the Pro Bowl, 
Uh, maybe it moves up to a mid-round pick, but people think they're getting a second-round pick or something of that nature. It's just, it's just not going to happen. Talking with John McMullen, our NFL Eagles insider. Follow John on Twitter at JFMcMullen, phillyvoice.com, si.com is where you can find all of John's written work. Uh, John, Deshaun Watson, and we've touched on this in the past as well, but this is really the news of the day in the NFL that he has submitted a request to be traded to the team. Uh, He has a no-trade clause, so he controls the destination he could be traded to. Despite the new hire of the, of the head coach for the team, it uh, doesn't seem to matter for Watson. But, you know, I, I just looked at some of the details, and it's going to be really challenging for, for the Texans to pull off a trade and for Watson to want to go somewhere if they even get to that point. You know, so just your thoughts on everything that took place. Uh, yeah, I, I don't necessarily think it would be all that challenging for Houston to want to trade him. I don't know why they would want to trade him uh, from that standpoint, uh, other than if he wanted to force his way out and became such a distraction. Uh, it is a, a little bit disappointing, I would think, from the perspective of, you know, on the day you have a new head coach, and that head coach has obviously been – um, you know, working for that position for so long, talking about the uh, youth and inexperience on um, the Eagles coaching staff. David Tully is, I think, 63, maybe 64. So he's been waiting a long time uh, to be a head coach, and I think this should have been his day, number one. So I think it was kind of classless, to be honest, for Sean Watson's camp to leak mm-hmm. that today. He could at least wait a week or so. Uh, but then the second part is, you know, why not sit sit down with this guy? You know, you, you don't like Cal Mc, McNair. You don't like Jack Easterby. That's fine. But, I mean, Tully's got a tremendous, tremendous reputation around this league. Um, who knows? Maybe you like him. Um, but, you know, it's, it's interesting because this is a theme. It's not only Deshaun Watson. Um, you know, you, you – You've heard the whispers with Aaron Rodgers for months now. Uh, we all know we're living through it in in Philadelphia with Carson Wentz. Um, so many quarterbacks are disgruntled in their situations. And I, I, the obvious question from there is, what makes you think going somewhere else is going to make it better, you know? Because you you just see the enormity of the number of these quarterbacks that are disenfranchised with their situations. I I, I just, you know, this is sort of a a new era in sports, and I think it's probably best, uh, uh, the best example would be the NBA, where you have these players just, you know, at the first sign of of things not going their way, uh, just wanting out. And it's not it's not good. I will say that. But I mean, from Houston's perspective, you know, you got to you got to get it's got to start probably with two first round picks. You're probably hopeful to get three and more on top of that. And then for these teams, and I, you know, people have already speculated, and, and certainly in the league, it's the Jets and uh, Carolina and Miami. Those are the three most likely destinations, I would think. If Houston was going to trade him, they would want to trade him to Carolina to get him out of the conference. That's generally how these things happen. Um, and if you're Carolina, let's say, you're going to give up three first-round picks. I, I think Deshaun Watson's great. I do. I think he's a, a top-five quarterback in this league. That said, Houston won four games, I think. Yeah. Now, it, what I'm trying to say is, this stuff is about more than the quarterback, and nobody realizes that. <laughs> and it's kind of amazing to me. Have we ever had this many teams as well as quarterbacks wanting a change? I mean, I'm just going through, you know, you rattled off some teams like the Jets and Miami and Carolina, and then you have Indy, Philip Rivers calling it quits, calling it a career, San Francisco and Garoppolo, the Patriots. I mean, there's like over, it's into double digits, and that's, I think, a conservative number. I mean, have we ever seen anything like this in the in the same offseason? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think if you look at the league as a whole, and I think it, it might have been Adam Schefter, might have been Ian Rappaport, uh, went down the list, and there's maybe 10 or 11 sort of entrenched quarterbacks out of 32 teams. That's pretty amazing. Uh, some of them, you know, entrenched from a perspective of being happy. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers is entrenched, uh, but he's not happy. Um, and, and you never know if somebody tries to, to force their way out. Already at the Senior Bowl, I can tell you, I was texting with people down there. That I, I mean, San Francisco is hot on the trail of, of Matthew Stafford. Um, and ultimately, if that happens, uh, I think you see Jimmy Garoppolo probably going back to New England. Yeah, you're going to see a, a lot of dominoes fall in this offseason. And to be honest, from a local perspective, I mean, that makes it that much harder if the Eagles do want to think about moving on from Carson Wentz because he is way, way down the list uh, because of how he performed. And then on top of it, some of the stories that came out about the way he acted, you know, if you want to believe he's killing plays on – uh, on purpose, despite the head coach, I, I personally don't believe that. I don't. I don't see what uh, he, it accomplishes for him personally yeah. by doing that. Uh, but you know, some people will believe it. I will say that. Yeah, that those rumors are are somewhat crazy to me. You know, I, I believe he's a little stubborn and and arrogant. It doesn't I, make sense. I'm with you. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, dude. Like, how? Like, why would he want to? Right. <laughs> Why would he want to uh, kill plays to make himself look bad despite the head coach? It doesn't make sense. And he you doesn't. Know, even if he hates the head coach, yeah. you don't want to make yourself look bad by running a play that's not going to work just to make the coach look bad. What sense does that make? <laughs> None. None. And I think yeah, he's smarter I, I mean, than I, that. I, I know Carson well enough to know he's not a dumb person. <laughs> so, I mean, I think that's just dumb, to be honest. And, and I think sometimes, you know, and I'm not killing the reporter because the reporter is really good at what he does. I'm sure he was told that. But I, I think too many times people don't take it to the next level because, you know, maybe you have a source that doesn't like Carson or, or something of that nature. And then you start to think, well, why, you know, why would he do that? What, what, is, what is the accomplishment? at the end of the rainbow, so to speak. And from that perspective, it just makes, it just makes absolutely no sense to me. Yeah, it, it makes no sense to me uh, either. And like Carson, he handles himself very, uh, he, he's, he's a gentleman, like to the media, and he's very respectful, and we know he's a, a man of faith. And some of these reports are just a little too extreme. I'm like, it, it just doesn't add up. Yeah, I, I mean, a lot of it is, and, and, you know, I've talked about this a lot over the years. He, he is uh, uh, a bit of a, a what I, you know, you, you always use the word stubborn, type A personality, whatever, how, however you want to describe it. Uh, and that rubs uh, certain people the wrong way. I think that's fair to say. Um, and, and then from there, you know, you know how... <laughs> sports locker rooms are it's like yeah. an old school beauty parlor with the hair dryers you know people <laughs> gossiping left and right and some of it gossip is gossip and some of it is um trumped up to say the least embellished uh and that's kind of what happens all right, John, we'll do it again tomorrow night to wrap up the week. Uh, last time for us at 1030, we'll do a full recap of the Seriani presser, and maybe we'll get into some, um, you know, just a fun conversation about what the Eagles could do in the NFL draft. Uh, so we'll, we'll have some it's fun on a Friday. Draft time. It's almost time to turn the page. <laughs> and actually, the draft starts in Mobile at the Senior Bowl, and that happened uh, uh, that's this weekend, and obviously the practices were this week. So, yeah, we got to start shifting to NFL draft mode. Yes, sir. We'll be uh, full draft mode soon enough. All right, John, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks again. All right, thanks, Ryan. Yep, later.
There he is, Johnny Mack, for his nightly segment on The Fix. Uh, All right, just like that, one hour down. When we come back from break here in just a minute, I'll react to some of the, um, you know, topics and bullet point items from what John uh, and I just discussed. And then uh, right around 11.10, about 10 minutes after 11, a little bit before maybe, depending on when I can get Kai uh, connected here, we'll talk some Sixers with NBA Sixers reporter Kai Carlin. All ahead in the second hour. All right, let's take a break. Get to the top of the hour. VEASAN update. Much more still ahead on The Fix. Live in the Prop Swap Studios.